12, 15, and then the JR was calling at 35, 42. <laughs> Look at the distance. <laughs> and uh, <laughs> that spit got right in my damn eye. <laughs> I never forget it. <laughs> you know, it's funny that it's in, it's in the WWE video game now. <laughs> For sure. I and mean, uh, I, I couldn't, I can't believe that they, they somehow, like, when I think about it, how mad it was that night, to think that all these years later that, uh, you know, we all started palsy wowsy again and that, that, that it would be in a video game. You know, it's like, <laughs> but you know, that's, that that's says a lot about uh, how far we've come. <laughs> you know, I'm I'm grateful for for everything Vince McMahon did for me, and um, you know, although in that match, it was when it was all over, when you finish a really hard match, and that match was only half finished, but you get a lot of phlegm in your lungs and stuff. Like that. <laughs> <laughs> you kind of gotta hawk up one of those corkers somewhere. <laughs> And you know, when I was a kid, I, I used to practice a lot. <laughs> Spit all the time. I used to get stuck at, at uh, my dad used to have a, a, like a beach kind of res resort kind of thing where I used to sit in a toll booth all the way for money to come in all out. For fans to, or people to come in to use the beach. And um, I would sit out there for hours. I would spit and hit, and I would hit like horse flies and stuff like that. I would like, really, have to be a really good shot. Like, and, I was, and I just remember that day when I spit on Vince. I mean, it was, I had to find a cutoff spot for that, that horker. <laughs> and it came from like somewhere down here. And I can say I got a lot of amusement out of it over the years watching Vince try to wipe that off his face. <laughs> <laughs> But it's in the video game now. <laughs> my healing moment with Vince was when uh, I got a phone call. I hadn't talked to him in well over two years. And uh, he was calling me up, up, up about, you know, something uh, serious business involving one of my friends. And he said, I know you don't like me, <laughs> but I know you love this company. And I called him back. <laughs> and then I, I got a call a couple weeks later uh, from, from Kevin Dunn. I don't care who you are. Am I correct? No matter how much you dislike that company, when you see the 203 area code coming in, your ears kind of perk up or your ear perks up. <laughs> and you go, what? It's Kevin Dunn. Kevin Dunn's the head producer in WWE. And he goes, uh, Mick, um, I was talking to Vince, and uh, we'd like to mention your book on our show. I said, my book? The, the one that says some bad things about your company? Yeah, so Vince moves on very quickly, and he always liked you and respected you. And so uh, I watched Raw with my kids, who were at that time were huge WWE fans. They didn't really care about the company I worked for. <laughs> and all of a sudden that thing came on, Michael Cole said, King, our friend Mick Foley has a new book out, Countdown to Lockdown. And the king said, Mick's a great writer. Everyone ought to walk out there and you know, go out there and buy it. And it was like, and at the at every moment he said that, up until that point when I'd asked about the um, the Hall of Fame induction, possible possibility of being inducted, I would go, I don't know if it was important to my kids. And I got to go on either first or last because I'm not like going on in the middle. I'm either going first and leaving, or I'm going to be on last. And the moment that they said that. Uh, it was like that mending was complete, and I said, absolutely, definitely, I would go on at any time. I'd be, I'd be proud to do it. And uh, I saw it as like, you know, like lunch with an old friend. And I think TNA saw it as like a passionate affair. <laughs> <laughs> that was kind of what signaled the start of the downward spiral over there. Was I think that that uh, announcement of the book, but that was definitely like my path to healing. Uh, any other female questions out here? Yes, yes, miss. Um, besides your own matches, what are your favorite matches that you've had with your own matches over the course of your careers? 
that I've seen anyone else have? Exactly. I'm going to give you two that I absolutely love. One of them, I'm not just saying it's kind of a matter of record. When I've asked, when I asked about my favorite WrestleMania matches, I've always said it was uh, Ricky Steamboat and Randy Savage from WrestleMania 3. <laughs> And then uh, Stone Cold and Brett. Yeah. 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 So I think those were two of my all-time all favorites. I watched a lot of Bruiser Brody matches, uh, a lot, a lot of, a lot of Dynamite Kid as well. Brett had some amazing matches with uh, with Dynamite, and I look, kind of looked at when I was a big fan. I thought, okay, I can't do physically the things that Dynamite does, and I can't. I'm never going to be as believable in brawling as Brody. But I can use my body as a weapon, kind of the way that my kid did, and I can grow my hair long. <laughs> <laughs> I can kick people hard, and uh, and that was kind of my prototype, was just trying to find a, a way to combine those two styles. Well, for me, I've, I've got a few. I really, really liked, um, years ago, I liked the match that Kurt Angle had with uh, Brock Lesnar. Yeah, yes. I, mean, yeah. I really liked, uh, liked how hard they worked in that match. That one's always stood out for me. And um, another match that I really enjoyed was, um, I have a couple of Sean's matches that I really liked. I really liked uh, the match you had with Undertaker. The first one a couple of years ago, the, like four or five years ago. Um, not their last one, but the one before that was, was exceptional. Imagine the last one was really good. You were pretty good too. And, uh, but I, I loved the match that Sean had with uh, Rick Martell at, uh, over in Wembley with where they had Sherry Martell involved. And I thought it was such a funny match. I can remember, I've always told Sean, so that was one of the funniest matches I ever watched. I remember laughing really hard as I watched it in the back. And they were all three were so good with their facial expressions. And I mean, I don't generally like a lot of comedy with my wrestling, but I thought they did a great job of uh, doing something a little different. I think it was a blindfold match or something like that. <laughs> but it, was a, it was quite funny and uh, I liked it. I think I'm, I'd have to go back and look at it, but. John's done some great matches, I remember, and um, you know, even Punk, uh, he's had some, CM Punk has, to me, had some yeah. great matches. Uh, the last year or so in WWE, I think he's really raised the bar for the next uh, generation to, you know, the, ne the, the new era that's in wrestling today is really, you know, they really churn out some great matches, I guess, me, I think there's some really great wrestlers. If, if I can remark on The Undertaker and, uh, and Shawn Michaels, I had a match coming up with Sting, uh, with TNA about two weeks after WrestleMania, and I was watching that match. They were having this amazing match, but I got what was making it amazing. I was like, what they're doing? First of all, doing everything really well, and they're kicking out of moves that everybody positively knows are finishing moves. It absolutely have to be, and that it's not the ending. I was like, that's all I need to do. <laughs> and then I realized there's an entire generation of fans who have never actually seen me win a match. <laughs> I went O oh, for the last decade. And I'm not exaggerating. I mean, I did not win a match from 1999 through 2009. And therefore had the unique challenge. Even somebody said, what about Mr. Sacco? I said, Mr. Sacco was a momentary three-second pop. <laughs> Put it on, and I get kicked in the genitalia. <laughs> uh, and so, it, it, 